It's going to be time for Code Weekly Contest 197, and I'm super excited. This morning's bi-weekly contest was pretty good, but it was also pretty easy, so let's see how this goes. Okay, cool. So the contest is over. I did all four problems and I got ranked 280. So it's not that bad. I think it's pretty good, but I got pretty frustrated by problem three. So let's go over the problems. Problem one, number of good pairs. Given an array of integers nums, a pair ij is called good if nums i equals nums j and i is less than j. Return the number of good pairs. Okay, we literally just bash this. So we loop through i from 0 to n minus 1 and then we loop through j, uh, starting from uh, j equals i plus 1 to n, because we know that j has to be greater than i. And then if the two numbers are equal, then we can just add 1 to the total. And yeah, this is literally just a bash problem. It's not that hard. Yeah. Problem 2. Number of substrings with only 1s. Given a binary string s, return the number of substrings with all characters 1s. Since the answer may be very large, return in modulo, whatever. Okay, so... The idea here is to get all the uh, all the substrings that have consecutive ones. So if we're looking at groups, then we can say, okay, this is a group of two consecutive ones, and this is a group of three consecutive ones. Once we can find the groups of consecutive ones, we can calculate how many substrings with only ones are a substring of this block. So I'm going to call them blocks, I guess. So if we have a block of length um, k, for example, then we know there's going to be k substrings with length 1 inside that block. There's going to be k minus 2 substrings of length 2, k minus 3 substrings of length 3, and so on, until there's only one substring of length k, because it's a k size block. So we can sum up the count of these substrings. Uh, so we can do k plus k minus 1 plus k minus 2 dot 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 plus 1. So that sum is going to be k times k plus 1 all over 2. And this is just, you know, uh, sum of arithmetic sequence. It's yeah, it's pretty easy to prove. You can search it up. It's a common formula. So once we find all the blocks, we can just uh, compute compute the number of substrings with all ones inside it using the formula. And then, yeah, OK, finding the blocks is um, the other part. So to find the blocks, we need to find the points where this uh, the string changes from a 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0. When it changes from a 0 to a 1, we record the spot that it changes to a 1. And then we keep going. And then when we hit a 0, we can just calculate the length of that entire block because we know we would have hit a zero earlier, um, but we didn't. So we know that this is a block of all ones. So we just compute that block and then we add to the total and then we keep going. Yeah, uh, it's pretty short code. Uh, don't forget to take it modulo um, 10 to the 9 plus 7. That happens to me quite a bit. Yeah, just have to keep it in mind right at the top and at the bottom. Yeah. Problem 3. Path with maximum probability. You are given an undirected weighted graph of n nodes, represented by an edge list where edge i equals a, b is an undirected edge connecting the nodes a and b with a probability of success of traversing that edge suck prob i. So the important part here is to note that this is just a normal graph, except the edges are labeled with a probability of traversing that um, edge. So given two nodes start and end, find a path with the maximum probability of success to go from start to end and return its success probability. If there is no path from start to end, return 0. Your answer will be accepted if it differs from the correct answer by at most 1, 10 to the negative 5. Okay, so this is a simple um, DFS, I guess. But uh, I got tripped up by this one. I mean, I, I think you could use Dijkstra's. And Dijkstra's is pretty similar to DFX, except like it's just altered. And um, there's also a little bit. There's also some differences. Um, which I usually don't implement because I didn't know Jagsters before, but now I, I, I think I kind of do. So we do a DFS, except we keep a running tally of what the probability of us hitting the node that we're currently searching at is. 
Um, so we start at 1 because we know that we're going to start at the start with probability 1. And then every time we cross an edge, we multiply by the probability of crossing that edge because probabilities stack up by multiplication. So essentially, when we get to a node, we want to make sure that our running probability is greater than um, the probability that was the, the greatest probability that was recorded before. And it all starts at zero. So if we haven't touched a node before, then it is always it the probability that we get to that node um, when we're searching is always greater than the existing probability because it's zero. Um, but if we hit a node again, and the probability of hitting that node on our current path is lower than the probability of getting to that node using some other path we searched before, then we want to stop because this path is not the most optimal path. We already found a more optimal path. So that's essentially what we do. Um, and this bit of code just makes sure, make sure of that. Um, but yeah, uh, this works. So there's no infinite loop here. We know that. That's good. Cool. That is problem three. Problem four, best position for a service center. A delivery company wants to build a new service center in the new city. The company knows the positions of all the customers in the city on a 2D map and wants to build a new center in a position such that the sum of the Euclidean distances to all customers is minimum. Given an array of positions where positions i is x i y i is the position of the ith customer on the map, return the minimum sum of the Euclidean distances to all customers. So basically, we just need to place a center such that the sum to all the points on the map is minimum. Uh, and this is actually a very interesting math problem. Um, so you might think, okay, what is it? Well, you might consider like finding the circumcenter because uh, actually, is that true? I don't know. You might try to think of triangle centers, uh, but there can often be more than three points. So we actually have to do use something called uh, wise fields algorithm. So yeah, so we see this um, geometric median algorithm. Uh, and then we scroll down, we read this Wikipedia article, and then we see, oh, wow. Well, there's actually a way to compute it. Um, yeah, so this is what I implemented here. Um, there's also some edge cases because uh, sometimes you can land on a point that's part of the map, and that doesn't work. Uh, yeah, and this algorithm is not perfect. It doesn't find the optimal point. It just gets closer and closer, uh, which is which is good enough because LeetCode only requires you to be within 10 to the negative 5. And I don't think I would have thought thought of this by myself because like you need a smart math guy to find this algorithm. It's like it's named after this guy. Um, so yeah. Okay, and that is the explanation of all the problems in Leak Code Weekly Contest 197. Uh, I ended up with rank 280. Not too bad. Okay, I think I think we're good. I think this video is good. Uh, Biweekly video did pretty well. So yeah. Um, well, thank you for watching. Bye.